Welcome back to Watch Us Live, the only show on Watchbox Reviews. So if you're here, you're in the right place. Guys, welcome from far and wide. We have a lot of watches on the table tonight. So I'm going to start with the thumbnail watch. Instant gratification, clickbait requested, clickbait provided. This is the Patek Philippe 5726, also known as the Nautilus Annual Calendar. This is a watch that bowed back in 2010, and if you want to get your Patek Philippe Annual Calendar action 120 meters water resistant, this is the way to go. It's everything the conventional Nautilus is. As you can see, the lines of the case, unlike the chronograph variant, are in no ways altered by the actuators for the annual calendar. The dial is a sensational gradient gray, so it's a metallic gradient, almost silver at the center, almost black at its edge, all applique white gold indices, and there's a lovely bilateral symmetry to it. You can split it from 12 to 6, and it's perfectly symmetrical from side to side. Now, I'm going to throw this one on the wrist, and I have to say, all things considered, this is a watch that remains perfectly cuffable despite its complexity. Automatic winding, annual calendar, you adjust it once in the jump from February to March, and it is a lovable thing. These watches, make no mistake, are marked up ridiculously on secondary markets. Wait lists are ridiculous, but when you get to the heart of the matter, what is the product and is it fun? The answer is yes. Away from all the money and worry and pretense and pomp, this is actually a lot of fun. A watch that was conceived with joy, built with elan, and can be worn with nothing but pleasure. I really like this piece, and I think while they are overrated, there's certainly something substantial at the core of that reputation. Jumping into our chat box. By the way, guys, that watch is 40.5 millimeters in diameter on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. We've got Dr. Phaedrus joining from the Philly area. We've got Simon Holt joining from Torrential Rains in Hollywood, Northern Ireland. We've got Karsten Lund joining from Denmark. Russell996 from the UK. We got Turkey Vulture. I don't know where he's from. Monsignor P. We've got Prince Wynn joining. And we've got Aaron Murphy from. Branson, Missouri. All right, we've got the heartland of the U.S. in here and Eric Cecil from New York City. Darren P. from Lansdale, Pennsylvania, another one of my locals. And Flavio H. joining from Romania. Thank you for staying up late in Europe. All right, let's jump into a watch that is an interesting setup for the watch that will follow. We know the old 41 millimeter Bond Seamaster well from Omega. The 41 bowed back in 1993, and it has been a long-serving and successful design. Well, this is a, don't laugh, limited edition of 11 1,007 pieces from 2012. It was actually intended to mark 50 years of James Bond movies, and it's a lovely piece. While it's not limited in any conventional sense, it does feel special, and it is a lot of fun. You can see the black lacquer dial with the 007 motif repeating, and then you can see that there is, of course, a 50 in the ceramic insert of the bezel, so you've got that wonderful mark of half a century since Ursula Andres walked out of the surf. The watch is the 41 in stainless steel, and it's got quite a bit of James Bond imagery, right down to a rare semi-display case back on the previous generation Seamasters. You can see the bullet motif, the rifling, from the intro to every James Bond movie, and then you can see at center the rotor pivot of caliber 2507. Get it? It's a fun piece, too. Still fully functional as a dive watch. It has the fold-out dive extension. It has the helium escape valve that James Bond once memorably used as a grenade. And, of course, the watch is a lovely and rather discreet James Bond tribute. When you take it a few paces back, it's tough to note that this is anything other than a Seamaster. Now, let's talk about what came afterwards. Last year, the 25th anniversary Seamaster, one millimeter larger. What returned? the much-loved Omega Wave dial. Now made of ceramic, the dial is remarkably lustrous, glossy. It won't oxidize, tarnish, or fade with time. The bezel is red gold, Omega Sedna. What's different here? Well, it's 42 millimeters instead of 41. 50 millimeters lug-to-lug, 13.7 thick. You can see the watch wears easily on my wrist. And while I do recommend buying this watch on the bracelet, I also recommend getting the strap because this is the most comfort you will ever enjoy from a dive watch. The strap on this watch is phenomenal. And even if you have the bracelet for value, buy the strap for comfort. This is a lot of fun to wear. And of course, now we have full display case backs on our Seamaster Diver 300s. 55 hour coaxial chronometer caliber 8800. Good looking arabesque Cote de Genève black and screws. 
Let's jump back into the chat box, see who's here. I can see Mason one saying that's nicer than the 007, less cheesy too. Remember, the 007's not quite as evident outside of studio lighting. And I can see Mark S saying, not a fan of the SMP 007 tributes. Aaron Murphy, though, saying loving that two-tone on the 2018 model. Jumping in, JBO Surf joining us from Adelaide, Australia, saying he's not a fan of the gas escape valve. Make it flush like a sea dweller, I guess you're saying, and it would be close to perfect. Well, let's talk about a watch that does have a flush helium escape valve but almost everything else about this watch is loud and proud this is as extreme as Omega dive watches get this is the 2015 redesign of the Ploprof. Of course, the original Ploprof was designed for Comex in the early 70s, though never used by them. That was the Seamaster 600. The new 1200 bowed in 2009, and it was redesigned for 2015 as the watch you see here. 48 millimeters lug to lug, 55 millimeters from nine to three. The Ploprof is a 1200 meter diver, and what changed for 2015? Well, first and foremost, this titanium watch features a titanium dial with no date. That was a major change for 2015. You can also see that instead of the previous sapphire capped bezels, we now have a ceramic bezel insert. And if you turn it all over, we also now have a visible movement as the 2009 version of the watch had a solid case back. Let's talk about this clasp. You have a fold out dive extension. I'll try to turn everything inside out. You have a fold-out dive extension, but you also have a push-button slider, so you can change the sizing of the watch using that push-button slider incrementally. Even as you have the full fold-out, you can get two inches or 50 millimeters of adjustment from the two mechanisms. There is a wonderfully supple and badass looking titanium mesh bracelet known as the Shark Proof Bracelet. I wouldn't test the theory, but it is wonderfully comfortable, vents the wrist well, and we need to talk about how this crazy bezel works. Just as with the original Plo Prof, there's a plunger that you activate up at two o'clock, and then you can actually turn the bezel in both directions to line it up with the minute hand, which is oversized and broad. It has immense amount of loom. Now you have a zero to 60 minute count up timer. And let me show you how the crown works. It's a bit different than on the vintage watch, but it features an all aspect crown guard, a little bit like what you'd have with a Panerai, only it is a conventional screw down crown. And once you have screwed it out, it withdraws with impressive stanchions bracing the guard on each size. This is one of the most over engineered crowns you will ever encounter. In in a watch that wears surprisingly easy, even on a small wrist. Guys, I can recommend this watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters, because it's actually short lug to lug. Look at that, it's not even approaching the edge of my wrist. And that helium escape valve, well, yep, it's got one. And JBO, this one's for you, it's flush with the case. All right, jumping into the box, we've got lots of friends. Dustin Van Patten j shouting out from Tacoma, Washington. And we've got Bent Remy saying beautiful, though I don't know if he's speaking of the Plo Prof. Bent Remy saying cuffable, word of the day. And then Amro asking, when IWC, Tim? Right now, Amro, we're going straight for the IWC. First, a latest generation Portuguese automatic. This is the reference 5007-10. So released in 2015, the latest generation is 42.3 millimeters in diameter this one with a lovely sunburst blue dial automatic winding with a seven day power reserve it's just over 14 millimeters thick 50.3 millimeters lug to lug so you can see this watch has no issues on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist look at the dial at nine o'clock you've got a constant seconds at three o'clock you've got that power reserve turn it all over iwc manufacturer caliber 52010 seven day power reserve note the now ceramic peloton paul based winding system why ceramic reduced wear and it doesn't need lubrication so it doesn't create dirt on the movement free sprung balance with an overcoil hairspring now beating at four hertz not three, an upgrade over the previous version of the watch, but the real upgrade for the 52000 series is the addition of a second mainspring barrel, so the watch neither runs fast when fully wound, nor slow when almost discharged. This is the major upgrade for the 50000 series, and the one you want if you want your big pilot or your Portuguese auto to keep chronometer grade time. This was the single biggest technical upgrade since this movement bowed in 2000 as the reference 5000, and it's still one of the biggest automatic movements in the world with a diameter of over 36 millimeters uncased very impressive stuff amro i'm up in the ante with iwc how much am i up in the ante well i am giving you a minute repeater let's enjoy 
the IWC 3770 Grand Complication. All right, this is a watch that bowed back in 1990 as the ultimate IWC. The 3770, this is the 377001. They made 50 of these in each precious metal per year through the 90s and 2000s, 42 millimeters in platinum. The watch is easy to wear. This one is a 1995 series, part of that series of 50 made that year. And you can see on the wrist, it's just about 48.5 millimeters lug to lug. So this is a moon phase, perpetual calendar, chronograph, minute repeater, automatic winding. And as you can hear, it has an exquisite minute repeater developed for IWC by Renault et Papy before they were owned by Audemars Piguet. The perpetual calendar system has been designed by Kurt Claus. It is not only a perpetual, but it is coordinated. So everything moves in step. Let me show you how this works. You don't have to look up the moon phase, the day, or the date. With this perpetual calendar system, the watch is able to upgrade entirely in coordinated fashion. So if you can adjust the date on a Rolex Datejust, you can adjust the perpetual calendar on this IWC Grand Complication. So an APRP minute repeater and the Kurt Claus perpetual calendar system. It is an opus and believe it or not, let me move the minute hand out of the way. It features an aventurine moon phase disc. As good as it gets, this watch for under $100,000 is one of the best buys in high horology. And it's got a tank tough Valjoux 7750 as the basis for IWC caliber 79091. I adore that piece. Let me get you an actual price for that because I want to let you know what you can have for just a little bit more than people are currently paying for those IWC perpetual calendars. That watch is about $86,000, $85,000, $86,000. That's a monster. All right, jumping back into our chat box, we've got lots of friends in the box tonight. Jenny P saying he... Uh, Jenny P saying she is a fan of Kurt Claus and Gunter Blumlein. Gunter Blumlein was a giant of the watch industry and probably the most important, I would say, father of the modern luxury watch space that most people have never heard of. But we'll do a special on him someday. JLC was one of his charges, not just IWC, not just Langa, but Jager Lecoult Gunter in conjunction with... John Henry Belmont helped to reestablish JLC in the late 80s and early 90s. And this is a watch from 2011. It is the JLC Duom at Cantiem Lunaire. It is a chronometer grade moon phase calendar with a foudroyant jumping seconds hand, one sixth of a second, 42 millimeters in white gold, 200 pieces, turn it all over. And you can see the caliber is built like a longa. Twin mainspring barrels, one drives the escapement, one drives all of the complications and the time display. You wind them with one crown. All of this is German silver or nickel copper zinc. And you can see the two power reserves, each 50 hours, drive two separate powertrains and the balance and the anchor act as a traffic cop, switching power on off between the two, one, two, one, two, one, two, to drive the indications as well as the balance. I wish I had a polishing cloth, but you can see this is a lovely dial with a photorealistic moon phase and age of the moon display. And even better, not only do you get a zero reset second system, you get a zero reset second system that zeroes both the foudroyant and the seconds display. So you can set this chronometer grade watch precisely to a reference time. Not a COSC chronometer, but JLC boasts it'll run to one second a day. Well, point proven, I've verified it. All right, jumping into the box right here, JBO Surf, badass, best JLC ever. Right here, Peter M saying, if Tim and I got married and had a child, it would be that JLC. Poetic. 
if a bit odd and disturbing. And I could see right here, Rafael Morales saying, best if you put the watches upside down on your wrist. And then JBO Surf asking, Tim, what is the cost to service the JLC? That I imagine probably somewhere around $1,800. So not crazy and definitely not Audemars Piguet crazy. By the way, JLC now offering eight year warranties on new watches. You go guys, setting the standard. Let's talk about, I talked about how this is a movement that looks like a Longa in the JLC. Let's talk about a real German watch. Launched in 2013, this is the, I, well, this is the Glasuta Original Senator Chronometer Regulator. So this is the 42 millimeter white gold Senator Chronometer Regulator, and it features the caliber 5804, which is gorgeous, by the way. German stripes, jewel set in chaton fixed by blued screws, a double spiral graining on one of the ratchet wheels, and you can see the second one open worked to show you the planetary system. Look at the engine turning on the base plate, the mirrored anglage on the edge of the three quarter plate, and the freehand engraving on the half bridge. Guys, can we get super close? I'll hold it straight. This is a watch that is designed to be beautiful, but it's also a German certified chronometer. SLME LMET, a fully cased up ISO 3159 based chronometer test administered in Germany and this watch receives a certificate from the German authorities. It has a matte grained dial which is actually composed of lacquer. It's a matte application of lacquer, not something you see often. Seconds, minutes, hours, there's an AM PM aperture in the hours display. There's a power reserve at nine o'clock and a double digit date over at three. Let me show you the coolest zero reset on the table. Yes, including the JLC. This one zeroes both the seconds and the minutes. The minutes adjust in detent increments, so always precisely one minute forward or backwards so you can easily set this watch against a reference. It is beautiful artistically and intellectually. Let's throw it on the wrist. This is a wonderful watch and I would take pride if this were my only watch. I would feel fulfilled. Easy to wear on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the short and tightly downturned lugs make this one easy to accommodate. And it is beautiful, so achingly beautiful. Jumping into the box, I can see some folks are saying, M. Fenimore, ha, Tim, I bought a Zin 104G. Good on you, that's a lovely piece, I'm a big fan. And then Christopher G, does a German watch want to hurt you a bit? No, the Germans are actually quite a good deal of fun. And you know, because they make such beautiful things, as ex exemplified by the table tonight. And if you don't have a lot of money for your cheerful German watch, I have a cheerful German watch that does not cost a lot of money. Retailing for just around $1,400 new. This is the 2017 Zin 556IB. I for improved and B for blue. Applique indices, no date dial, three hands, all you need. 38.5 millimeters in stainless steel. How over-engineered is this watch? Take a look. The removable links are fixed by hex screws. The milled, not stamped clasp on a three-hand watch that's not a diver. It includes a fold-out machined dive extension. How excessive is that? But lusciously so. Everything about this watch, right down to the fact that they give you an upgraded top or chronometer grade 2824, makes this a wonderful example of a German watch that doesn't only want to meet you halfway, it wants to offer you the finest things in life at an accessible price. On the strap, I believe these sell for around, oh, I want to say like, $1,300. It's crazy. So, better living through Germany. You've seen it in the form of the chronometer regulator, and now you see it on my wrist. 38.5 millimeters, 11 millimeters thick. It's not a gentle giant, quite the opposite. It's gentle, discreet. It's understated in the way the best German machines are, but with that little flash of blue to crack a smile. Oh, right. I'm a big fan of that watch, by the way. I think that's probably the most impressive three-hand watch I've got on the table. And I'm about to show you a Laurent Ferrier that pegs the meter. This is the Laurent Ferrier Galle Square Micro Rotor. I don't know what to call that dial. Glacier blue, ice blue, radioactive Cherenkov blue. But I will tell you this. It's minimalist, it's gorgeous, and it's ghosted. You can barely see the name of the maker. 
spare white gold indices, white gold Essegai or spear style hands. This 41 millimeter watch is exquisitely produced in stainless steel. So you don't have to pay for precious metal to get what you really want, this case back. Now I'll hold it steady if we can get a little bit closer, guys. This is Laurent Ferrier caliber FBN 22901. You have one, two, three, four, five interior angles, a black polished skeletonized cap to the half bridge of the balance, black polished bridge for the 22 karat gold engraved, guilloche cut micro rotor, Paul based, absolutely silent with a jeweled staff, 72 hour power reserve, immaculately abrasive wheel laid Cote de Genève perfectly aligned across bridges, and mirrored on glage so fat you can enjoy it without a loop. The escapement, double direct impulse inspired by the Breguet natural escapement, two wheels impulsing the balance directly, no lever, over coil hairspring and a silicon alternator to block the wheel that's not currently impulsing the balance. Throw it on the wrist and this is a full-size men's dress watch. 41 is not traditional but this is a wonderful 41 that wears easy with so much color, so much character and a sexy sinuous billowing form to the case, the lugs and the bezel. I adore this watch even while well, it challenges your optical senses, it can be a bit difficult to read. I can tell you from 10 paces, it's gorgeous. A lovely piece. And I can see Matt Foster saying, I do like that blue. I like the racing green dial best. Well, you and me both. I have a porcelain that's gonna be up on Watchbox Reviews in a few days. That was a 10 piece series that will be up. Then we've got High and Rising. The watch with a bracelet, I believe he's talking about the Zin, costs a fraction of what Rolex would charge for a bracelet and no watch. Alexi Simola saying for the Laurent Ferrier, the micro rotor to own Russell 996, saying the movement is gorgeous, and Robert Fletcher, that Laurent Ferrier is stunning. And Christopher G noting that I said interior angles. Indeed, I did. Speaking of Rolex, let's talk about Rolex. Would you believe that the year 2000 is starting to seem like vintage territory? Well, this is a P-series Rolex Datejust with a lush combination of an engine turned bezel that is not fluted gold that is an engine turned bezel in steel and a tapestry dial the combination of the two with their strong striations is complementary and the condition of the watch is time capsule quality and i'll show you how you know that in a moment this is what life was like if you were rocking a date just back in the y2k era and yes this watch is y2k compliant now it has a sticker on the case back that not only still features the original reference number, if you look, it still features the original Rolex Jubilee pattern. Let me see if I can show you that. It still features the ghosted Rolex Rolex pattern in holographic form. That's how intact this watch is. Not just never refinished, hardly ever worn. A shame for the first owner, but what a find for the collector of near-term vintage. That watch, almost two decades old, is getting to the point that we can call it vintage. But here's a watch that I actually prefer. One of the wackiest datejusts you will ever encounter. Reference 116200, 36 millimeters. How is this watch different? Let me count the ways. First, domed bezel. Second, lavender radially arrayed Arabic numerals. Let me show you this watch properly oriented so you can see how different that radial array of numerals looks. You can see from the inverted 567 just how different that pattern is as opposed to erect numerals that flip at the bottom half of the dial. Look at that lavender. That's super luminova. It's lavender super luminova. So these glow blue purple and the hands with regular luminova glow green. This is a wacky watch from Rolex. Look at that cross hatching cut to the dial and it continues outboard the seconds hatching is actually a continuation of the center dial. So you have satin finished hour track, you have cross hatching outboard, cross hatching inboard, two different colors of Luminova and a domed bezel. I adore this date just. If you want a Rolex that gives you the one thing most subs, Daytonas and GMTs cannot get this watch, get individuality get a unique watch you will never see again in a Rolex case. How often can you say a Rolex lets you be different? This one does. Caliber 3135 inside. Let me sh throw it on the wrist one more time. 36 millimeters, and that's just about a perfect size for me. I like the look, I like the feel. With the Oyster case, it looks more like a 38. It's a big, broad case profile. Okay, jumping into the box, we got a lot of folks tonight. Uh, question from Ryan Jones, are the Lumerals noomed? Yes. 
the numerals are loomed, and they are loomed kind of purple-blue, but the hands are green, and it is a very striking effect. Subscribe to this channel, by the way, if you haven't, and join me at Tim underscore Maso on Instagram, so you can see my one-minute videos of all of these watches posting over the next couple of days, because I post nothing but video reviews, one-minute video reviews, on Tim underscore Maso on Instagram. We got BKR421 saying, I like the tuxedo dial one, so you don't see many of those either. That's a fact. Here's an interesting watch. A wacky watch in its own way. This is the Hodinkee IWC Pilot's Watch Mark 18 limited edition of 500 pieces. It's ceritanium, so the case core is titanium, but the outside is ceramic, so it can't shatter or fracture like ceramic can, but it also won't scratch like titanium can. Now the watch is 30 nine millimeters, and as you can see, this reference 32481 is an interesting no-date take. It's actually a tribute to a IWC ceramic chronograph from the 90s, the reference 3705. You wouldn't necessarily know that, but it's a wonderful tribute to the Mark series, even if you don't get the chronograph reference. It has a lovely dial with a sort of cross hatch, cross hair form, 3, 12, 6, and 9, and I do like the, the contrasting loom. I'm not a fan of Fotina, but here it works. Not as Fotina, but as a color contrast. A lovely piece, and again, one of 500 made for this year. Here's a watch you hardly ever see, because we hardly ever talk about high-end Chopard. This watch, the Chopard Lunar One, in white gold, 43 millimeters, a 250 piece limited edition from 2005, a moon phase and a perpetual calendar. The watch is unusual in that it is both a COSC certified Swiss chronometer and it bears the Geneva Hallmark, the Poisson de Genève. So it is a double certification, Geneva Hallmark and chronometer. Micro rotor automatic, 22 karat gold, two stacked barrels, 65 hour power reserve. You can see black polished swan's neck finage adjustment, immaculate Cote de Genève, engine turned perlage, engraved micro rotor, mirrored englage along all bridges, and mirror jewel and screw countersinks, all screws with black polished heads and chamfered slots. And this is a watch you can pick up for under 20 grand pre-owned. Look, you don't need a Nautilus. You don't need a GMT Master. You don't need a Daytona. You don't need any luxury watch. But when it's your hard-earned cash, why not get the most watch for your money? What you don't need should be the most fabulous thing you own because your discretionary dollars should be pure fun. Buy the ultimate watch for the money. Get something like this, not the watch everyone's chasing. Oh, right in the box. M. Edmund saying, Carl Frederick Schäufele approved. That is a fact. And Alexei Samola of Finland. Wow, handsome L-U-C. Robert Farrago, not necessarily a fan. Are you the actual Robert Farrago? Okay, and then we've got right here, Thomas Burnett saying, Fotina looks great on the Railmaster, not necessarily the Hodinkee. Timekeeper saying that Chopard is a watch lover's watch. And then Freddie Turner, Chopard LUC, a secondhand buy only, but a beauty. I'd agree with that on both counts, a beauty and a great secondhand buy. Now here's another great secondhand buy. This is a recent Reverso, the JLC Reverso Classic Large. 45.5 millimeters from lug to lug, 8.8 millimeters thick, 27.5 from 9 to 3. You can see this is an elegant three-hander, manual wind, stainless steel, and this is a traditional reverso. Like the originals designed for polo players in India during the 1930s, this one features a completely metallic case back. No second dial, no complication, a canvas for personalization. The original reverso was a simple sports watch concept. If you're going to shatter the crystal with your polo mallet, revolve the case to bear a metal face to the mallets until you need your watch again and the game or the match is over. Well, that's what this watch gives you. With a Falliano design strap, it's a lovely and lush piece of seamless leather, not made by Falliano, but inspired by them. This is the new JLC, Casa Falliano designed. Wonderful, substantial, lovable, timeless. If you want the JLC, this is it. This is their Submariner. This is their Speedmaster Professional, the icon, the all-timer. I have other cool watches. If you want a sports watch in steel and you want an icon, Zenith doesn't have a design icon. Zenith, instead, has a movement, the El Primero. But why not get it in this lovely pilot-style chronograph? This is the El Primero Pilot's Chronograph, 42 millimeters in steel, with an unusual bracelet. Now, the bracelet here is like the shark-proof bracelet on the Omega, only you can see it works like a strap. 
It has gusseted apertures. It has that same silky microlink feel on the wrist, but you actually size it and buckle it like any strap. So it's the best of both worlds. It's the feel and comfort of a strap, but it's the solidity and durability of a bracelet. 42 millimeters, it's a big date take on the El Primero caliber, 4010. And as you can see, display case back, the El Primero, 50 years young this year has one of the best looking aesthetics of any automatic chrono. You can see and enjoy this movement. I really like that. I especially like that bracelet with its straight. Let me show you one more thing about this. It has a straight bar end profile so that you can really see that 1960s inspiration. Straight bars were all the rage back in the 60s and early 70s. This is a very effective aesthetic. Oh, by the way, all the numerals, solid blocks of Luminova, not printed, three-dimensional and sensational by night. Also a telemeter dial. JBO Surf saying, better get that shark-proof strap. I always wonder why they call it that, right? You're gonna get attacked by a shark, eaten alive, what's left? Your wrist. Nice job, Omega. And right here, Brick Lane asking, any pee on the table tonight? Uh, no, nothing on the table tonight. Juan almost asking how much, uh, let's see, the Zenith. I actually have pricing. I don't like to make the show all about pricing, but it is, uh, it's about $5,250. Okay, what I do have, however, if you want high horology, and another watch that I'd say is probably a best, best as a pre-owned buy, Breguet reference 7057, a la tradition, white gold, 40 millimeters. Look at that caliber 507 DR. You've got a gold dial, hand guilloche, and then silvered. You've got the barrel at the center. The power is transferred to a great wheel, a third wheel, a fourth wheel, an escape wheel, and then the balance. The balance, a modern free-sprung aerodynamic recessed bolt balance, but with a Breguet overcoil. And if you look at this blued shock protection system, this is not a shock protection spring of the modern era. This is not Kif or Inca Block or Edishock. That is parachute. Shock protection as invented by Abraham Louis Breguet in his day. Power reserve indicator for the 50 hour power reserve. Turn it all over. There's a second power reserve indicator and you can see the mechanism that drives the indicator on the case back. A lovely watch and probably one of the most underrated dress watches you can buy. Immaculately hand finished, albeit in an anachronistic frosted style. This is a wonderful and underrated dress watch of our era. And if Breguet has an icon other than the Type 20 Pilots watch, it's got to be this. All right, jumping back to the box and my friends from Far Flung. Right here we have Matt Foster saying, I do like this Breguet even in the white gold. And then Graham C saying, Breguet just taking it easy with that one. I like it. I'm a big fan. Honestly, I think that's an underrated watch. And I think an underrated brand and a wonderful basis for talking about sports alternatives to the common culprits. This is the 20th anniversary Grand Seiko Sport Collection Spring Drive GMT. This is the SBGC 231 Titanium. 44.5 millimeters. If you look at that dial, get super close to the dial. It is a brown bronze with lush striations tossing to and fro every which way, designed to evoke a lion's mane. The lion, of course, the icon of the Grand Seiko brand since 1960 and the first example. This is an incredibly dynamic dial. Note the bezel, sapphire capped like a blanc pas 50 fathoms, and the case, a polyhedron with immaculate satin and polish. The polish, all of it, Zeratsu tin plate finished by hand. The entire case of this watch, an enormous titanium component, is hand finished like the finest components of Swiss watch movements. Caliber 9R96 underneath the case back. When you see that gold medallion in a Grand Seiko watch, you know you're getting a hot rodded version of the movement. And you could see this one a vertical clutch column wheel spring drive chronograph. How accurate with that gold medallion? How about plus or minus 10 seconds per month? That's how good this dual time, 200 meter, three day power reserve, chronograph, limited edition of 500 pieces tells time. Oh, by the way, it's got a power reserve indicator. All the toys in one toy box. And we'll end with the ultimate underrated manufacturer. This is a brand that frankly deserves so much better than the collector community and the secondary market gives it. Ulysse Norden. 
probably the most accomplished manufacturer that's not Swatch Group, Seiko as a whole, or Rolex. And this is the Freak Cruiser. Launched in 2013, it features a carousel. The hour hand is also the movement. Seven day power reserve, manual wind, you can see free sprung, silicon escapement, double direct impulse, the wheels made of silicon and etched from the solid. The hairspring, silicon, anti-magnetic, the depth of the dial, incredible. And this is the first freak ever to be water resistant. Only 30 meters, but every little bit counts. Let me show you how you set a freak. But by the way, there's a little bit of a secret. If you ever pick up a freak and you have to set it, first, unless it's the very initial version from 2001, lift the little tab at six o'clock and then you can turn the bezel system. Let me make sure it's unlocked right there. You can turn the bezel to set the time. And because this is a carousel, not a tourbillon, you can move the movement even as it beats away without damaging the escapement. And that's what the Freak has to offer. Truly unique, still freakish after almost 20 years. The Ulysse Nardin Caliber 205 Baguette Movement Carousel Anti-Magnetic 7-Day Power Reserve. You wind the watch using the case back. Is that freakish? You better believe it. But as a freak myself, I identify with one. Takes one to know one. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Thanks to you, thanks to my crew, incredible live audience tonight, and I give you all credit. Guys, time out, Tim out, and thank you, as ever, for logging on. Mm -hmm.